Hello everyone and welcome back to Practical Software. Today we'll be looking into a small and very beautiful piece of technology that almost literally move our world. Microcontrollers. Microcontrollers are tiny specialized programmable chips that host a number of features that makes up the brain of so many devices out there. In fact, this was what actually got me to programming. There was something magic in being able to code something in my laptop or computer, flashing that piece of code somewhere else and see something happening with my own eyes. There was something magic about it. Let me give you a brief introduction to what those microcontrollers actually are. Like your cousins, the microprocessors like this Raspberry Pi or your CPU you're probably watching this video with, they are also programmable chips which contains the basic foundations for computing. They have memory, they have IOs, they have arithmetic logic units. But there is a big difference between them and I want to highlight them. First of all, the microcontrollers possess a much smaller instruction set comparing to the conventional CPU. This means that they are simpler devices by nature. They, they can't do the complicated processes or instructions. Just to give you an example of an instruction, adding two numbers digitally is one kind of instruction, a very basic one, which is supported by either device. But if you want to, for example, convert data, floating points to integer numbers in a very efficient way, this is likely to be supported by a CPU, but not by a microcontroller. Just for reference, a modern CPU like an Intel or AMD chip can host up to 2000 different instructions, each one doing very complicated things. While in the microcontroller, we see instruction sets up to 200, at most 400. So already feel the difference in the complexity of tasks they are able to do. The second biggest difference is the fact that the microcontroller, like this STM32 device, usually holds what we call peripherals. Peripherals are dedicated functional blocks that are really good at this very specific task. For example, if we want this STM32 to communicate with an external device that uses UART, Universal Asynchronous Receiver and Transmitter, it has its own UART block. So you don't have to program the whole UART synchronization thing by yourself by hand your code. You delegate this to your functional block. While in a CPU, not in Raspberry, so Raspberry has a lot of peripherals, but usually in a CPU like an Intel or an AMD, you will not find those peripherals. You, you usually rely on external chips to delegate those tasks to. So in a microcontroller, there is a quite diverse, versatile functional blocks that you can rely on and delegate special functions. While in the CPU, you would rely on external, fully external devices to communicate or interface with other components. Now imagine, let's imagine a very specific case. Let's imagine you want to control a robot. So a robot has many interfaces. You can imagine that it relies on sensors. It has to actuate on the wheels, on the motors. Usually to me, if you want to build a robot using a microcontroller to control all those peripherals, all those external parts with its dedicated IO and functional blocks is much more uh, convenient for a microcontroller than a, a microprocessor. Also, a very important difference is the fact that microcontrollers are very good at performing tasks at a very specific time. So for CPUs, it's very difficult to deterministically rely on execution time because it has usually an operating system and the operating system has a lot of tasks run at the same time so you can barely rely on a very precise timing. While on the microcontrollers you have full control over the operating system. You can also embed your own operating system, a very simple one in a microcontroller, but it depends on your application, but it's very usual that we have full control over our application or over our execution times, over the times using a microcontroller. At this point, surely you must have heard about a number of different families of microcontrollers. Very conf confident that you have heard at least of Arduinos, STM32s, ASP32s, or even Raspberry Picos. Yes, those are indeed microcontrollers. And each brand or family will produce a series of microcontrollers that are adequate for different kinds of problems. Let's go very quickly to the different versions or branches of microcontrollers. Starting, of course, with Arduinos. Arduinos are one of the easiest microcontrollers to program, not because they're, the chips are quite simple, but mainly because of the IDE and the whole community that was built over so many years that laid out a really easy 
foundation for people that want to get started programming. The chips are nothing special, so they come from the 18 mega family of microtutorials, which is now owned by Microchip. It's really the community, the IDE that facilitates getting you started with the microcontrollers programming. They have libraries that interfaces with many different peripherals, with many different devices. So, and they really did a good job of making the, the ecosystem convenient for people to get started with, even kids nowadays. I wish I could show you an Arduino, but I don't have it anymore. I left my own in Brazil back then when I moved to the Netherlands. But they are in my heart. Here's a picture. Look how beautiful they are. Another very popular brand of microcontrollers are those ones, the ASP32 devices. This is a really good microcontroller at connectivity. If you want to make your application online, in the cloud, internet of things, networking, communications, this is a microcontroller to go. And they don't leave out the basics. You still have your UART, you still have your timer, I square C, you have your foundation of very essential blocks for a microcontroller plus the whole commu communication stack available for you. Also high speed clocks and a low cost. Plus, it's very easy to program those nowadays with Arduino IDE. The community of Arduino made sure you could also program your application with IDE of Arduino. So it is also not very step learning curve to use those microcontrollers. The Raspberry Pico has been showing more and more popularity over the past few years because it's really low cost and it features so much good functionality. This one, for example, the basic, the most basic one has two ARM cores. Yeah, it uses a dual core microcontroller and it also features the basic essential building blocks for any microcontroller like UART, timer, I squared C, even for some versions, not this one, but other versions feature wireless and Bluetooth communications and it's very low price. The only thing you have to be aware of is it has a little bit more learning curve compared to Arduinos. You have to know a little bit about CMake, but in the end of the day, given the cost price, it's really effective because you can do so much with this microcontroller. And of course, the one and only STM32 microcontrollers. This is a very powerful family of microcontrollers for different reasons. One of them is that it allows Arduino, so the whole Arduino community can use the, their IDEs to program their applications with this microcontroller. But for industry, there is a very special reason industry wants this one. First of all, it is highly configurable, so you can, you can easily configure the clocks, and the IOs, the peripherals, the pinouts, you can configure so much that allows you to adapt this microcontroller to your electronics board, which is where it will end up one day. So it has to end up somewhere physically. And it has so much flexibility in the configuration that is quite convenient to adapt to your board. Plus, it is highly eff power efficient. So this microcontroller allows you to configure it in such a way that it uses very low energy, very low currents and still gives you a quite a good performance in CPU compute time and also quite the range of peripherals. It has also um, really professional IDEs and tooling and community that really makes a powerful set and a powerful ecosystem for serious professional applications. That's it for this part of the video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have really learned something new today. Stay tuned for part two.